Yesterday I was out with Abby Dog and we discovered the craziest thing ever. An entire fence post covered in bees. They weren't wasps, they weren't hornets, they weren't anything crazy, they were just simple honeybees. And they had completely taken over this one five foot fence post on the back of my pasture. And I gotta admit, I've actually never seen anything quite like that. I've seen videos in the past of honeybees swarming, which is when they go and leave their hive to go find a new home. But I had never ever seen a situation like this where they had swarmed in person. And I've honestly seen very few videos where they've swarmed in such a large size. Like I'm about five foot nine and this fence post is maybe just a little bit shorter than me. Also what you can tell is the fencing wire here itself is actually five feet high. So to have a fence post like this covered in layers and layers of bees is just absolutely insane to me. Now when honeybees swarm like that, they are generally speaking acting like an organism. They are all moving together, following their queen. There are some bees who are acting as scouts, but they go look for good space to go recolonize, and then they come back to the rest of the hive and inform them. The rest of the hive will send more scouts, and eventually they'd make a decision on where they want to end up. Now, viewers familiar with our YouTube channel know that I do have honeybees here on the farm. I'm really an inexperienced beekeeper. This is only my second year of actually even having my bees. My bees from last year died over the winter so I don't have beekeeping skills whatsoever but my first thought and instinct was oh crap those are my honeybees and they're probably trying to escape so Abby dog and I quickly went back down to the house I threw on my beekeeper costume and I went to my hives to check on their status Yeah, all my bees are accounted for. You know, a couple of weeks ago, I had just checked on my hives and I actually even took away a couple of honey supers. And I was able to take about 14 pounds of honey for me and my wife, which was really cool. We've never had that much honey harvested from our farm. I did a quick check of the colonies. I checked for things like varroa mites. I was trying to make sure that they were healthy, that they had enough of what they needed. And they seemed like they were in really good shape to be ready for winter. Because here in Northern Vermont, bee season ends really quickly by mid late September. I mean, there's nothing else pollinating at this point. I mean, other than things like goldenrod and maybe some milkweed, there are very few flowers left. So the pollen options are getting low and they're starting to struggle in terms of what they're finding available to them. But as I checked on my bees yesterday morning, what I found is everybody was in good shape. Both colonies were accounted for. They hadn't split off or anything. My colonies seemed happy and they were doing their thing. So that meant that the bees that were on my fence post were from somewhere else, from somebody else. They belonged elsewhere. They were not my bees. They have the faces of a stranger. But here they were. They'd set up shop on my farm. But now, as I've said before, I am a beginning beekeeper. I never really had any experience with beekeeping up until last year. And so I got to admit, I'm kind of self-conscious about my lack of skill. And I was really lacking the confidence to try to do something like tackle taking that entire hive by myself. I mean, you go out there on YouTube and you see all these extreme videos of people trying to capture swarms and rescue hives and take hives that were in somebody's toilet. And while I would like to be that guy, I know that I am not that guy. So I decided that the best course of action would be to put out the news in my local community and say, hey guys, we just had a swarm show up here on the farm. If anybody wants to take it, go for it. Very quickly on my local Facebook group, I started to get some responses from folks saying, oh, that's interesting, or wow, that's cool. And they started tagging people and saying, hey, is so-and-so interested or is so-and-so interested? And I was getting a little nervous though because nobody had really reached out to me directly to say, hey, I want these bees. You know, it would be totally okay if the bees swarmed, stopped here on the farm, got a chance to enjoy some of our lovely flowers, and sample some of the long grasses that we keep on our top pasture as a way to help the pollinators and birds. And then they went on their merry way to somewhere else. The problem is I was worried about where that somewhere else would be because winter is coming and it's gonna get cold. And those bees had no chance of creating the honey stores that they would need to survive a harsh Vermont winter. But that's when my neighbor Lori came to the rescue. So Lori lives down the road from me a little ways, a super, super nice lady. And she's been keeping bees for, gosh, nearly 20 years. But because she's actually not in a situation where she can keep bees at her house now, what she said is she'd be happy to help me catch them and then we could keep them here at my farm, which I was totally up for. The problem was I didn't have a hive box, but she said, don't worry about that. She even had all the supplies needed to bring them in. And so 
I said, okay. Lori showed up at the farm. She had her beekeeper costume. She also brought some supplies, including a milk crate to set the hive on so that it wasn't sitting right on the ground. The scout bees are going out from here. They're flying off. They're looking at different potential places to live. And then they come back if they find something that's the right dimension. Yeah. And they do like the little jiggity jig dance yeah. and they're like, 20 wiggles south. They'll tell each other where the best sites are and then the other scouts will go out and check it out. And when there's consensus among the scouts, they pick a spot and they all go over there. That's basically who's flying off right now. Those right. are the scouts coming and going. And somewhere in this mass is a queen. I like to use these for ventilation when it's warm. So we're gonna take out two and then what we're gonna try to do is dump our bees smack dab in the middle. So now you're gonna spray just to attract Right. This is like lemongrass and some other oils in it. Toby says, that's horrible smelling. <laughs> but it's a concentrated sugar water with some something called Honey Bee Healthy. Do you like it? I've seen that advertised, yeah. Oh, it's great. It's really, it's good stuff. So hopefully they'll say, oh. This is the perfect spot. This place smells good. It's got plenty of goldenrod still, you know? It's got everything it needs right here. He's doing the movement waggle there. Oh yeah, I see it right there. You got one? You got a, a waggler? Right. This yeah, and this one right here, right? They're all they're yeah. all doing the waggle dance. There's a great spot right over here. And they just kind of pour like water right now. Try not to step on them because if we lose the queen down on the ground, we don't want to step on her. Okay, they're looking for the queen. They link legs and you can actually see bees that are stretching across like like no because the guy over here won't look of his leg oh, yeah. over there i'm kind of wondering if she's in in that patch there yeah. patch now, which is tough because if we brush it she might fall to the other side of the fence and actually getting to that side of the fence is hard because you have to go all the way back down and around and up if you want i could try to go around and brush from that side more. And then you try to catch from this side. Yeah, we can do that. I mean, right. you, could, you could take a cup and a brush. Yeah, and, and hand and, over the fence. Yep. Let's do that. You okay? Oh, <laughs> the risks of beekeeping. It is fun. I, I gotta admit, I really appreciate you coming down there to do this. This is a lot of fun. I hear him coming. Where is she? Ready? Okay. Woo! That's a lot. Maybe she's in here. There's some tall grass here.
wait, is that her? I think I see her. I'm not 100% though. Uh, I don't think it's her. Like, nobody's paying attention to her, so I'm assuming no. But I'm seeing lots of butt waggle dance here. Cows, come on, cows, fresh grass, come on, come on, let's go, fresh grass for the cows, come on, hey, cows, come on, cows. Speaking of the cows, we have a new t-shirt available from Goldshaw Farm. It's a shaggy, shaggy cow t-shirt. It features my good buddy, Kurt Cobain, the steer on it. It's going to be only available for a very limited time. These shirts are high quality, they're American printed, and I think you're gonna love them. Our other collections of shirts have sold out, but these are available until September 26th. Check it out, I'll leave a link down below. Thank you for the support, as always. Well, we're already pretty big, but yeah, I guess it'd be cool if cool people started wearing our t-shirt or whatever. So since there wasn't too much left to do after we swept up most of the bees, Lori went home and I went back to doing other stuff around the farm. And I admittedly started to get my hopes up. You know, I see bees as an invaluable resource for our farm. I actually have no aspirations whatsoever of ever trying to grow honey or produce honey for any sort of commercial purpose. But when I think about things like what we're trying to do with our pastures, and when I think about things like our permaculture orchard and all the trees that we have growing here, like this apple tree, bees are incredibly important because they are the pollinators for trees like this. And in fact, as I've tried to design the various plants that we have scattered around here, particularly the trees, I've put great emphasis on having things that are great for pollinators. We also have certain things like these swales that you see right here in front of me. Notice how I don't try to go mow through here and the cattle don't go through here. What that does is it creates a layer of stuff growing like goldenrod, which becomes additional pollinator. And you also start to see other things, like I think that's a birch tree, naturally starting to spring up. So both the planful nature with things like the black locust and the mulberry and the chestnut and the apple, as well as just the pure natural diversity. You know, I really am trying to create a good silvo pasture that's good for both humans, animals, and beneficial insects. And I really didn't try to go beyond the two colonies that I currently had because I'm still very much learning. I'm just getting through the basics. I'd love to get to a place where I have at least one colony survive the winter this year. And so it felt kind of irresponsible to try to keep adding more and more hives. But to have a situation like I had yesterday where I catch a hive and I'm hopefully able to attract it and get them to stay, I'm happy to provide them with the sugar water they need to have the feed to get all the way through to next spring. And then maybe I've increased the number of bees we have on our farm by 50 50%. Now again, I'm saying that's what I was doing as I was getting my hopes up. But I went out to the bees later in the afternoon to check on the fence post and check on the situation. But when I went out there and looked at that fence post, pretty much all the bees were gone. There were like a handful clustered in a tiny area. But when I looked at the hive, what I found is most of the bees were inside the hive. It was awesome. I think we were very successful. As you can see, there's still some bees that are out here. There's even these bees right here that are still on the fence post. But I'm pretty sure that we at least got one of the queens inside the box. And so that's where she's gonna stay. Most of the other bees seem pretty happy and are satisfied inside this little bee house. And so yeah, I think we've successfully captured some more bees here on the farm, which is pretty exciting. I'll check back in here tomorrow morning to see how they're doing and how they settle. And probably in a few days, I'll move the beehive from over here to closer down to the farm where I have my other beehives. So by 6 p.m. last night, we definitely had captured the majority of the hive inside our boxes. And I'm personally super optimistic to see what's going on this morning. And so now that my cow chores are done, come on, Abby, we're gonna go see the bees, let's go. What are you doing over here, chicken? You're in the wrong spot. Abby, what's this chicken doing on this side of the pasture? All the other chickens are over there. I'm gonna have to check on you later, girl. All right, Abby, what do you think we're gonna find? We've got no bees left on the fence. That's a good sign. If I look at my hive box here, seems like 
everybody's hanging out. You can see bees coming and going. But I'm not gonna just leave you guys with that as the resolution. Let's get this hive box opened up and see what's inside. Change into beekeeper costume. Whoa, <laughs> I'm dizzy. I don't know how Linda Carter did that. Not the state of mind you wanna be in when you're playing with bees. All right, let's see what we got here in the beehive. All right, first let's take this off. We were just using this as a weight. Eventually I'll put this in the bottom of their hive. Would you look at that? That's so cool. They have definitely settled here. They have colonized. Woohoo! I'm gonna close this back up quick. I don't want to disturb them too much. Wow! That is so cool. I'm so excited. Looks like I caught myself some bees. I can't believe that worked out so well. Gosh, a super shout out and thank you to my neighbor, Lori, for giving me that experience. And now I feel like I've ever have to catch a swarm. I know it's not that big a deal and I can do it myself, but I don't know. Sometimes you need like the push of a friend to like give you the confidence to want to do something. And so thank you, Lori.